On the 1st of July 2020, over 1,000 people turned up to work at Mackay Regional Council and hardly any of them commented on the fact that their coordinates in the data sets they used had shifted 1.6 metres. This was exactly the result we were hoping for when we embarked on a project to implement the Geocentric Datum of Australia 2020 at Mackay Regional Council. So as part of our agenda for today, we will be talking about how we transitioned to GDA 2020 and how we implemented that across the, the business. The role of 12D model and how we use 12D to run through our processes and transform the data. And then we'll go through the lessons that we learned throughout this whole process and hopefully pass on some insight. So I'm Luke Simper. I'm the Assistant Survey Coordinator here at the Macquarie Regional Council. Uh, my role in this process was to ensure that our team were able to utilize 12D and the 12D chains to smoothly run transformations over our data. And I'm Megan Dillon. I'm the survey coordinator at Mackay Regional Council and I oversaw the GDA 2020 implementation project. Luke's going to come back later and share some more about the role 12D model played and I'll share a bit about our practical experience implementing GDA 2020. But before we get into that first, a bit of background information to set the scene. The Geocentric Datum of Australia, GDA 2020, became Australia's national datum in 2017 and was officially adopted in Queensland on the 30th of June 2020. I'm not going to get into all the ins and outs of what GDA 2020 is. For the purposes of this presentation, what you need to know is that there has been a change in Australia's coordinate system to make sure that our mapping coordinates match up with our GPS coordinates. If you would like to know more or watch this full Tractors Go Road video, you can visit the ICSM website and check out all the resources that they have. If that site is too technical, there is a post on the 12D Synergy blog, which gives a nice summary of the impacts of GDA 2020. And if you're not up with all the different terminology around GDA 2020, there is a recording of a presentation that Dr. Lee Gregory gave at the last 12 year tech forum that you can check out. So that's GDA 2020, now Mackay Regional Council. We are a local government on the central Queensland coast. We look after an area roughly five times the size of Brisbane City Council, but we've only got about a tenth of the population. So we have to be really smart about how we spend money because we want to minimise the burden that we place on our ratepayers. When it comes to spatial data sets, all of our existing data sets were based on we're in MGA 94, which is based on the previous national datum. And we're lucky because our mainland area, it sits within one map zone, which really does simplify how we handle coordinates. Regarding heights, Mackay is built on a floodplain, so it is extremely flat and levels are critical. We tend to spirit level wherever possible from good permanent survey marks to make sure that our heights relate to AHD. We decided that we wanted to transition to GDA 2020 because of being smart about how we spend our money. We wanted to be able to utilize existing data sets that have been captured by different people. We didn't want to be doing the same work. So we knew that most of those data sets would soon be coming to us in GDA 2020. And the easiest way to drop them into our GIS system would be if our GIS was in GDA 2020. Our transition to GDA 2020 had three main steps. The first one was we worked out what we needed to do. Second step was we told everyone what we were going to do. And the final step was we did it. 
we didn't have a dedicated budget for this project. It had to fit in around all of our day-to-day -day work. So the first thing that I did was I called up different council surveyors that I'd met at previous tech forums to ask them what they were doing, because why not learn from others' mistakes? I found that everyone was at varying stages and COVID had really thrown a spanner in the works for a lot of the Southeast Queensland councils. The surveyors at Logan City Council were able to put me in touch with their GIS team, who were in turn able to put me in touch with the GIS team at Sunshine Coast Council. Sunshine Coast Council, they had been looking at this since 2017, so they were very advanced and kindly shared their knowledge and some of the resources that they had, which helped us a lot. What became apparent from those conversations was our, we were lucky in the way that our GIS team was set up. Our GIS team is largely independent and it sounded like our software setup was a lot simpler than some of the other councils. The other thing that came out was that the software providers, they were ready. So data transformation sounded like it was nearly going to be press a button and you're in GDA 2020, which meant that the tricky bit was going to be the people's sort of thing. The Department of Resources in Queensland has a handy impact assessment checklist for organisations implementing GDA 2020. A couple of surveyors and designers at council sat down and went through this checklist. And we identified data sets, stakeholders, and potential issues that we would need to address as part of a GDA 2020 implementation. That list of stakeholders we then broke down into stakeholders who we'd need to directly engage and others that we just need to keep in the loop. I then took that list of direct, uh, directly involved stakeholders and set up a meeting. At that meeting, we came up with a list of action items and pretty much set to work. My main role from that point was to make sure that everyone was doing the jobs they'd been assigned to and that we were keeping on track for our go live date of 1st of July, 2020. And the other thing that I looked after was the communication side of things. With all the communications that I undertook, I kept one thing in mind. And that was for most people, all they cared about was what did this mean for them? I think as technical people, it's very easy to get caught up in all of the technical details, which are going to go right over someone's head who only cares about whether or not they need to update the coordinates of their favorite fishing spot. The answer is no, by the way. Thinking along those lines, I linked our datum transformation in to the topic of the day, COVID. Now, in our neck of the woods, the difference between GDA 94 and GDA 2020 is closer to 1.6 metres, but 1.5 metres was the number that was on everyone's mind. And along with the ICSM slogan of know your data, know your datum, it was something that was really easy for people to remember. I worked that into a general interest story for our staff newsletter. And the aim for that one was to reach any data users that we hadn't got in touch with yet. It was probably not as exciting as some of the other presentations that you're hearing over this tech forum, but very exciting for us because it made the front page of the newsletter. And normally our comms team says our stories are boring and put them near the back. So we did something right there. 
And in addition to all that one-way communication, I also did some face-to-face communication with important data users. And I set up an intranet page so that after I'd had those conversations, I could send them the link and they could forward that on to their own teams to make sure everyone was getting the same information. So while the communication side of things is happening, we were also looking at updating our data sets. The highest priority for us were our GIS data sets. We were again lucky with our GIS team. Our GIS team leader had gone through a similar process when Australia moved from AGD 66 to GDA 94. So he, he knew what he was doing, kind of left him to his own devices. I'm told that our internal and external GIS run on the same platform and refer to the same data sets. So our GIS team used Esri's inbuilt transformation options and wrote a lot of scripts to transform our data sets and then swap them in without breaking any links. We didn't transform absolutely everything though. We didn't want to be doing work for nothing. So we asked ourselves the question, what is the benefit of transforming this data set? The result was there are a few things that we didn't transform to 2020. The big one was construction projects. We made the decision that because everything is relative to the control on a construction project, that if a survey had been completed in 94. It was going to be designed in 94, constructed in 94, and the as constructed plans finalized in 94. The other ones were aerial imagery and LIDAR tiles. We knew that within the next 12 months, we were going to be taking delivery of a new lot of imagery and LIDAR. And we figured that most people are going to want to use the latest data sets. So they were going to be in 2020. And on the other occasion that people wanted to go back to historical data, we thought it would be simpler for them to grab just a small subset of those data sets and run the transformations themselves. Which meant, though, we needed to provide some guidance around how to transform data. I put together a series of fact sheets and they covered everything from a really rough uh, straight shift through to the different transformation options in our common software systems. Uh, these are all available for free on Mackay Regional Council website. Just go to uh, business, planning and development, design and construction requirements, and you'll see them sitting there. I'll now hand over to Luke, who's going to run through in a bit more detail how we use the transformation options in 12D model. Well, thank you, Megan. So I'll just go through the role of 12D model. Uh, with 12D being the primary software used in our team, we wanted to make sure that when we started to run transformations on our data, that it was going to be as smooth and simple for the team as possible. So we had three main points that we wanted to achieve to make this work. So we wanted to make a workflow that fit into our current processes, solve the risk of users double transforming and finding a way to know if the data had already been transformed. And could we then make this process automated? So implementing GDA 2020 in the field for our team was relatively simple. The first step for our surveyors when starting any new project is firstly to conduct a coordinate check of the GNSS position against the suitable permanent survey mark. Since we use a few different GNSS styles to establish our control from RTK base stations over known PSMs or using network GNSS, this initial check has always been important. But during this transition of GDA 94 to GDA 2020, we now have even more importance on confirming the coordinate that is first recorded. 
But since we already had a QA process set up for ensuring our coordinates were in the correct location, it has been a simple process to incorporate now measuring a new datum into our final survey report. So then what if we had data that we needed to transform from an existing GDA 94 project or when the coordinate system set in the field was GDA 94? So we want our surveys to match information like boundary line work and aerial imagery from our GIS databases, which are all in GDA 2020. So this is where the GDA 94 to GDA 2020 transformation tool inbuilt into 12D became part of our workflow. So the panel only has five tabs that need to be worked through to run the transformation. And for us, we found that they're typically the same every time only depending on the transformation setting. So for us with 12D, having the ability to personalize your workspace, create toolbars, it was a no brainer to create a toolbar with everything defaulted to suit us as to remove the risk of the panel being incorrectly filled out. So we made this toolbar as simple as we could. So using just individual 12D chains, we created a view that we run our transformation of the chosen data in. We then have our two buttons to run our GDA 94 to GDA 2020 or 2020 back to 94 transformation. But then we also added an option to reset the transformation. So we know what our datum is through our initial checks against the PSMs. We have been able to utilize the transformation tool inbuilt into 12D. So our next challenge we identified is how do we stop the risk of someone running the transformation over data that had already been transformed? So this is where we're able to use 12D change to put in place stops and checks on the data. To start the steps for these checks, we had to go to the end of our process first and figure out what can we do with the data after it's transformed so that it would be looked at at the start of the process. So the final step we came up with was to apply an attribute by an attribute manipulator file, which applies depending on the transformation performed, a simple string attribute to the data. So once we've had this steps all set up, it was just a simple matter of making our chain logical. So what we'll do now is go through these chains. So our first step, we create our view. So our prompt will tell us, add your data that you want to transform and do not transform with Tim as it will not work. So we'll go through, we'll turn on the models that we want to transform. And then it's a simple matter of going over to our next icon. So this data I've got here is in MG94 coordinates and I want to transform it to 2020. So now that I've now what I want to do, I'll run this in interactive mode so I can explain our steps. So the first step in this is to see if a model called transform data exists. Now this model is created throughout the chain because it will go through and have a look and see if this data has that attribute that we created at the end of the chain and it will create a model called transform data. Now if the model exists, we want to delete it first thing because we needed to run properly through the chain. So it checks to see if it's in there, it will delete the model if it is there. And then based on it's going, all right, this data that you've got here is going to be transformed. Do you want to continue? In this case, yes, I do. So now it starts doing its checks to see, is this data in MGA 94 currently? So now it will check to see if the data has been transformed. This is when it will run the global change macro and it will see if the attribute transform data is on any of the data in this view and it will create that model transform data. So once that goes through, so does it exist? It wants to just confirm that it's there and if it exists, is it empty or not? So if it's empty, that's good. That means there is no data in this view that has already been transformed. If it wasn't empty, we would get a prompt to say data has already been transformed. So I want to delete that model out of there. Don't want it to be in, in my data. There's absolutely no need 
for it to be in there. So now we're ready to start the transformation. <coughs> All our checks have been done. We know that this data is good to go. So then what I'll do is copy all the original 94 data and I prefix it. That way we can do some sanity checks afterwards and we've also got our original 94 data and we'll have our transform data. So now we're ready to convert once that's been done and this will just run that 12D transformation tool and obviously in this chain I've got it set to be the 94 to 2020 conversion. So run through that, quickly shift, and then once that shift has been done, we want to apply that transform data attribute, so it'll go through all that data and apply it. So once that's been done, we get a message to say, your data has been transformed. So what we like to do then is just do a couple of those basic sanity checks. So I'll go into here, I'll just make sure that that attribute was applied to the data. There it is. Transform GA94 to GDA2020. And then what we can also do is check to see, make sure the models are there, turn them ones on, and we can go in and see, make sure that transformation has worked the right way. So the stuff down further to the southwest should be the MGA94 models. And we check up here to then what is just a pure model name, and there's our 1.61 formulas, which is what we generally get for these kind of transformations. So I'm pretty happy that this has worked exactly how it's supposed to. I can turn those prefix models off, and now I know that my actual proper models in the, in the view are now in GDA 2020. So if I was to give this to somebody else and they decided they wanted, they weren't sure, and they were to run the transformation again, because of all the checks put into place, if I was to run it here now and tell it to the chain to run all the way to the end, it'll go through and same steps, it'll delete that transform data, data model out, let me know that this is going to be transformed as per normal. It does the checks, does that change utility and creates the model called transform data and it will then give us a prompt to say the data <coughs> that is selected is already in MJ 2020 coordinates. So because we've put that attribute on there, it will halt the transformation, stop the chain, and there will be no risk of it being double transformed. So once we've got that bit sorted out, if we realize that, oh, maybe I wasn't meant to transform this, I want it to be back in MGA 94. So we have got the option here to transform 2020 back to 94 as a button, but that is for your raw data. So what we did was just create a bit of a reset transform models. So what this chain will do is it will delete out all the data that was just transformed, all of our pure model names, it will then bring back in our prefixed models. Once they're in there, it will just run the map file that we've got, remap all the models, which will then put all the correct model names back onto it. So run that one through. Obviously we need to confirm which transformation we want to undo. So in this case, we wanna undo our MGA94 to MGA2020. So once we run that one through, And then it lets us know that we've only got MJ94 data in the project. So when we go back onto here, there's just purely our models and all those prefix models are now gone. So obviously the same process works completely fine for if we had MJ2020 data, we measured that in the field under that coordinate system, and then we wanted to merge that with a previous datum project, so we can run it the same way, and you can work backwards and forwards between these ones, and that has worked for us since we implemented this, we've not had any issues, so pretty confident in, in, in what we have done. So now we will go, Meg and I, I'll bring her back in, and go through the lessons we've learned throughout this project.
So what we found is the data and processes are important, but anyone with spatial knowledge shouldn't have much trouble in being able to implement datum transformation. So we've got a lot of people who use spatial data who don't really understand it. And they're the ones that we need to make sure we're communicating with so that they know what's going on. So as we know, checks are key. Any surveyor knows to check their data as a standard. So applying these checks to this process should be simple. And we have found using aerial photography as a great check. Make sure you read the GDA 2020 technical manual because different states have different transformation methods and you don't want to pick the wrong one. So it all comes down to your metadata. Know your data, know your datum. We hope that you've found our presentation informative and if anyone out there hasn't implemented GDA 2020 yet, hopefully that has given you a few ideas on how you can go about it. And since we have been through this process and we've been over well truly over a year now with not really a hiccup we're happy to field any questions or any any queries uh, about what we've done enjoy the rest of the tech forum <laughs>